Hello everyone! Today I'm going to show you how to make this really cool colour palette generator which shows you complementary colours every time you select a new colour from this built-in HTML colour picker. So, let's get into it! I am here in my HTML and I'm going to kick off by adding the elements I need on my page and they are three divs and the first one is going to be the colour input that we're going to use to decide the rest of the palette. So for that I'm going to use an input tag with a type of colour and what that does is it loads the HTML inbuilt colour picker which is extremely useful. It does render slightly differently across browsers but it all does the same thing and I've styled it up to be really big. Normally it's not this big but for this project this size is going to work perfectly. I'm going to give this an ID of input and a name of colour and then I'm going to give this a label and tie it to my input with the four attributes. So four equals input and then the label I'm going to give it is going to say select colour. So hopefully it will be nice and self-explanatory what people have to do to use our colour palette. And another thing you can do is set the value attribute and then it will always load a colour of your choice. So I'm going to go for FF69B4, hot pink. Oh yeah. Now my other two divs are going to show the other two colours in my colour palette but they're not going to be colour pickers themselves. So that's nice and easy to set up. I'm just going to do a class of colour, both of them, that's for the styling reasons but you won't see that yet because I haven't selected any colours yet. And then they're both going to have an ID. The first one's going to be colour 1 and the second one is going to be colour 2. So over in my CSS, just to show you what's going on here, I can set a background colour of, what should we have? Chocolate? That does not look like chocolate, but okay, well, <laughs> we'll go with it. Actually, that's really rather hideous. Let's choose something else. Cornflower blue. Lovely. And the final thing I need to do in my HTML is to bring in the, the tiny colour library. There are various ways of using this, either in the browser or in Node, but I prefer just to bring it in via the HTML with a CDN, which actually isn't mentioned in the docs, or if it is, it's so deeply hidden that I couldn't find it. However, you can find it by searching on Google for tiny colour CDN. And then you just need to grab the latest minified version, which is this red one here. It's got min.js in it. So copy this and then put that into the head of your HTML. And now we're bringing in tiny color and we can use it to do awesome things. So now I'm going to head over to my JS and wire up this bad boy. And the first thing I want to do is grab the elements I need from my HTML. And that is my usual const. I'll grab the input first, which is my color picker, equals document.getElementById, and that was called input. It's just dawned on me, actually, that these are really color two and color three, because this is color one. So let's do that. And then our color two is our input color two. And then we've got color three, which is the input color three. And then finally, I'm going to add an event listener onto my input. And that's going to look like input dot add event listener and because I want it to change every time a new color is selected from the picker I need to use the input event listener if I use click it would only work every time I click the actual input rather than the color picker which is not what I want and that's going to run a function called generate which I will write now the first thing we need to do inside generate is grab the color which is currently selected from our picker and to do that we did const color equals input dot value so now let's just check that it is actually grabbing that color Color from our color picker. Yes. So you see, whenever I click on a new color from my picker, it is indeed logging the color to my console. So that is great news. So now it is finally time to bring in tiny color and start using some of the amazing functionality from that. If you go to the tiny color docs, you will see that there is a whole huge range of methods you can use, which are extremely cool. I think basically anything you could ever dream of doing with color is right here. I'm going to go down to the section called color combinations. Now if you're not too au fait with color theory, like I'm not, you might find this slightly baffling, but there's a very easy way to find out what they all do, Adobe color wheel. And you will see here that the color wheel has various color harmonies, which are the same as the color combinations on tiny color. So I'm interested in the one called split complement. So you'll see it basically selects two colors which go well with the color you choose. And to use that, we do a new variable, which I'm going to call split complement colors. And then I basically need to use this method here. So that is tiny color into which I'm going to pass my color, which is this input value that I grabbed just now. And then I'm going to do split complement. And if I console log split complement colors and show you what that's actually giving me. It gives me an object with the original color we selected plus the other two, which would be the result of the split complement. But you'll notice that the color picker gives us a hex, but the split complement method gives us HSLs. So the only thing we need to do now is get both of them out and put them 
into our two colour displaying divs. And for that, we do colour two dot style dot background colour is equal to split complement colours one. And the reason it's one is because objects in JavaScript are zero indexed. So zero is our pink that we selected at the beginning, and number one is our second colour. So I also want to do the same thing for colour three, but that's going to have split complement colours two, aka this one. So let's have a look at what that gives us. All right, very nice indeed. So now when I select a new colour from the picker, we get the split complementary colours to go with it in our corresponding divs. And the final thing I'm going to do just to wrap this up is to run generate on page load so that we always have a nice colour palette when we arrive at our app and remove my console log. Well, that's about it for this video. I hope you found it useful. Let me know what kind of videos you want to see from me in the future. And in the meantime, keep coding.